Hi, this is Dan from Real Mac Software, and today we're going to take a quick look at the all new version of Squash 3 for Mac. Now, what started out as a minor update to Squash 2 actually eventually ended up being in a, a six month long rewrite um, to bring Squash really up to date. And I think the time was uh, well spent, and hopefully you'll agree when, as I go through and show you all the new features that are available now. So just like the original Squash, you get presented with a single empty window ready for you to drag on your images. Now I can drag in a single image, a bunch of images, or a folder full. Um, so I'll just drop those onto there. And you'll see this is completely different from the first squash. We're now presented with a nice grid view and a lot of adjustments we can make uh, to these images on the right hand side. So another new addition, if I double click on an image, I can zoom into it and it shows me a before and after. Uh, it also shows me the uh, how large the image was before and on the left hand side and on the right hand side it shows us what size it is after the compression and changes we've made so you can see this is actually larger and that's because this image is heavily compressed uh, already so if we go to an image like this this doesn't have much compression on it so it's 1.6 megs and squash has compressed it to almost half the size or half the size uh, so let's go back to this image and it's still telling us that this is not compressed enough you know you're actually making the image larger so all we need to do is just bring this slider down on the compression uh, to bring it under a size uh, or closer to a size we want and you can see I can move this split view back and forth and check the compression settings and, and, and see if I can notice any difference because that's what you're looking for I mean you can really keep keep going lower with this until you can kind of see the image start degrading uh, and there, you know, we've we're at around let's let's put it at fifty percent, and you know we we've not just over hundred k off of this image, um, and obviously a lot more for for this image, which is great. Um, we can compress it into a JPEG, a PNG or PNG, a TIFF, WebP file or AVF, and these new options, uh, these two options, are new for Squash three. Um, let's head back to the grid view. Um, now, if we look at what we can change, we've added a resize option. So now um, you can adjust the width, height, maximum size, the percent, and the free size. Now, this will apply it to all the images in this grid view. Um, so you can see there we, we've enabled this. So this is now resizing this image to 1200 wide. And it's telling me this here, as you can see, the uh, image size and file size is drastically reduced. And we can move this and just see, you know, that there's no degradation in quality there. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, what we can also do, we can also make some adjustments. Now this is all new in Squash 3 as well. So these we can, um, if we want a bit of sepia, you can do that. We can just increase that there. And one thing you might have noticed is actually applying this effect, not only to this, but all my other images as well. Because Squash acts as a batch app, you know, all the images you drop into it, whatever settings we change here are going to apply to all of our images in the main view. Um, so I can do monochrome, and, you know, you can mix and match these. Um, Maybe I want to blur the image. This is, I've used this many times. This is great for headers on websites. You know, if you want that kind of blurry background, great because you can do a whole bunch of images for an entire site and just get them done in one go. Um, so yeah, so you can see these, these effects are changing here, but it's also changing these thumbnails, which is, which is very cool. Now, if I go back to the grid view, you'll see it's also updated the images there, but um, and what is quite amazing, this is all doing this in real time. So if I adjust this slider, it's affecting all the images in the grid view as well. So that's doing it live on everything, which is quite phenomenal. And I don't know of any other app that, um, that can do this in a batch view like this, which is, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so we can click along in this thumbnail view to check how each image looks and how it's doing. Um, so I'm going to close this down. So if we switch these off, then that removes the effect. Um, 
So uh, let's go and open the effects tab. Uh, now this is completely new for Squash 3 as well. Um, we've added some filters to uh, to give your photos a bit more of a, a bit more feeling. Um, these are just nice tweaks to the colors to, to just improve your photos. And we've got some classic black and white ones and this adds some vignetting. Um, and you know, if some of these effects you're thinking, oh, I kind of like this, but it's, it's, it's a bit too heavy on my image. You know, I'd like to dial it back. We've also got an intensity slider there. So you can just knock it back. Um, and what's again, what is amazing is this is doing it all in real time live. So it's applying it to all of our images. Um, and we can also mix and match things. So I can add the adjustments up here. I can also sharpen on top of, on top of having these effects. Uh, I can add a sepia, uh, not that you probably want to, but I could do a bit of sepia um, and you can resize them. And this is doing it to all of my images. Um, all being updated, which you, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and if we want to see the before and after a bit clearer, uh, it's nice having this split view, but sometimes you want to kind of flick back to show the original and the new one. You can do that by switching this off. And then if you tap this, tap the little eye, you can see the before and after. And it'll also update this to kind of show you the, the size and what changes are being made. Um, spacebar works the same. You can tap the spacebar to do this as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I like this. I'm gonna leave it on the split view. Um, now, if we move down, we've also got a watermarking feature. This was a big request from a lot of users. They just wanted a quick way, especially photographers, they wanted a quick way just to watermark their images. Um, We've kept it simple. You can adjust the size. This is percentage size based on the image. So even if you've got a, a mixed set of images that are large and small, Squash is always going to put a nicely sized uh, watermark on it. Um, so I'm going to change some of these settings. We maybe want it, you know, I think we want it pretty faint. And I'm going to make the size a bit smaller and I can offset it there. Uh, maybe bring that back. Okay, we dial that down. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. And I can just check how it looks on my other images as well. So that's watermarking. Uh, and you can you can change the, the position of it as well there. Uh, so I'm going to switch that off for the minute. Um, we've looked at the compression settings before. Um, so yeah, so those are those. And then we've got preserve metadata. And this allows you to remove the, or keep the metadata when you're exporting your images, uh, the location and the camera model. If this is off, the when you export with Squash, it'll strip the metadata out. You know, because if you're uploading to the web, you probably don't want to include the GPS location of your, of your original images, or generally you don't. Um, so you, by default, that's off and that gets stripped out. Uh, but if you want to leave it on, you can tab that on. Um, we also got a rename feature, which is uh, which is super powerful and improved over the last version of Squash. You can uh, put it at the beginning and the end of the original file name, or you can replace the file name completely. And what we've done is these hashtags here. You can um, it'll numerically. Uh, name your images so wherever you put this you know uh, you can um, you can put this at the beginning or end these these numbers they can they can go anywhere so wherever you wherever you place those hashtags that is where the um, the the sequential numbers will appear um, so I'm going to replace the image name um, with this so we uh, and I'm going to say uh, photo there. So this will rename all of our images and it'll be 001 photo, 002 photo, which is perfect if we want to clean up these names and uh, upload these to a, a, a web server for a gallery, something like that. So it, it's, it's a great way to just quickly export a bunch of photos and get them renamed. Um, 
Okay, on to export. With export, we can choose to, if we just hit export images, Squash will prompt us for a place to export them to, and it will do that each time. Or we can uh, open this tab and pick a place. Uh, I'm going to do demo. Let's create a folder called demo. And I'm going to select that. And whenever I use Squash, it's always going to export the images to that location. So uh, if I just hit export images now, there we are. You'll see Squash is done already. And it's saved uh, six megs from those items. And it's exported them all to that folder and it's renamed them. and save them all in there. Uh, let's do demo two, you know, and if I wanted to, um, let's come back out of there. I could compress these even further, add a watermark, uh, apply a different filter. I'm gonna resize them, uh, change some adjustments. Let's scroll down. Uh, I'm gonna switch that off. I'm gonna say export images and it's gonna ask me, and I'm going to pick the demo two folder that it just um, that I just created. And Squash has gone ahead, exported all those, and you can see this time it saved 10.4 megs um, from the batch. And if I scroll through these, you can see it's added the watermark and our new filter. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to now let's open the preferences. Um, We've got a, a few nice things in here. We have obviously support automatic changing of uh, theme, so dark and light mode. Uh, you can switch it over to light mode there, which I think looks pretty nice, uh, but I prefer the dark mode. I think that looks a lot more pro. We've also got a selection of dock icons here. Um, we've gone with this skeuomorphic icon, which I really love. It's kind of got a bit more of that old feeling to it. Um, while still fitting in with Big Sur. But you know, if you're not a fan of that detailed look, you can just pick the flat squash icon. We've even included the old squash two icon because uh, a lot of people loved that. And it is such a nice icon. Um, I just know that it doesn't really fit in with Big Sur because it's a standalone icon. So now you get to choose how you want that to look. Uh, I'm gonna leave it on this one because it's my favorite. Now we've also got some Zen tracks in here, uh, which can play in the background while you're editing. And this first one is included with the basic um, filter packs. So each of these are included um, with the filter packs, which, uh, which we haven't talked about yet. So um, let's play a Zen track and then I will, we'll move over to looking at some of the filters. So if I tap this, this will play in the background um, and it will just loop and you know, uh, and I can have that going. I sometimes even, you know, I sometimes even leave this playing uh, and hide squash and just have this kind of Zen uh, music playing in the background. And you can choose different tracks there. Now these two tracks come with um, the analog filter packs, which you can get separately or buy as a bundle with squash. Um, so I'm gonna stop that for now. Uh, you can also control them from here and there's also a menu up here where you can stop and shuffle them, etc. So, uh, so the filter packs, uh, you probably noticed that there was this get more button here. And if I hit that, it's going to launch uh, our web page here and show you what filter packs we have available for squash. Now we've got two at the moment and these um, filter packs were originally in a old app almost 10 years ago. We made analog for Mac and iOS. Uh, it was originally for Mac and, um, and so that was a long time ago and we've worked hard to bring that filter system up to date uh, for modern technologies and modern Macs and we've put it into Squash. Um, now with filter packs it's often hard especially you know if you've looked at Lightroom and you've seen the kind of filters they do and it's often hard to know how they're going to look on your own photos. So what we've done with Squash, we've added a preview filter where if you've got Squash installed, you can hit preview pack in Squash 3. I'm going to say yes, allow that. And Squash is actually going to download it from our website uh, and get it installed for us to preview on our own images. 
so you can see I've got my images I was working with and then it's giving me a list of the uh, the filters available in the analog filter pack so I can look through these and see what I think and see if it's a pack that I would like to buy now all these analog filters we spent months and months and months researching vintage cameras film types uh, just to get the look just right for these um, and this is one of my favorite this is toy box and this is based on a toy camera and we spent a lot of time getting this just right you know these aren't just tweaks of colors this also uh, you can see this blurring and this pulling uh, and this vignette around the edge of the imager here uh, and this really if you've used a toy camera one of the really old style toy cameras you'll notice uh, you'll be familiar with this look and I think it gives a great retro look and completely transforms uh, the way the way your image looks it gives it a lot more feeling and and kind of depth gives it that vintage feel but yes yeah, so these are a lot of uh, there's a lot of nice filters in here and these were all originally in analog for Mac and as I say, we've updated them and brought them over to Squash. Um, there's random light leaks and textures and scratches. And, you know, they're all random. So each time you view uh, or you export, you'll get you'll get different results. And I think that's pretty cool. So this is just a preview here. Um, now, I've actually got them installed on, on my Mac, of course. Uh, so I'm going to exit this preview. Um, and you can obviously do, uh, if I go back a page, you can obviously preview the borders as well the same way. Uh, but let's close down Safari for now. And I'm going to open up my preferences folder and go to effects. So I've got the basic set, which is the one um, that ships with Squash by default. So you get these. Uh, if you just buy Squash, then you get this standard set of, uh, of filters, uh, these effects here. And with that, you get this first Zen track. So if I, um, let's open the prefs again. If I enable these, you can see more the fil more filters pop in and are reviewable there. And I enable the borders and you can see it's added uh, another tab down here for the analog borders. Um, and with that, these two tracks will become available. So if you just installed Squash, you won't see these two tracks until you uh, install the other uh, filter packs. Uh, so just like in the preview, I can go through and I can view these newly installed filters. Um, and the difference here is I can obviously adjust the intensity. And you'll notice the light leak changes as I do that because it's being reprocessed. Um, yeah, to give different results. And you'll also notice when um, when I click through these images, the filter previews update. So as I said before, you know, everything in this app is live updating. Uh, it's very powerful. And I don't know of many apps that that do this kind of uh, well, I don't know any apps that can um, that do this batch effect on on all your images. You know, so you can see how all of these uh, look. Uh, I can open up the borders there and you can apply borders to these images. Uh, let's have a look. We go in here. Yeah, there we are. And you can see that grunge filter has been applied there. Uh, now the analog filters are all, the frame sizes are fixed because uh, that's just the way, that's just the way they are. Because um, they're, they're just based on old uh old frames, old old cameras and stuff. So they don't, um, you can't resize the frames, they're fixed, but they do, uh, the, the filters on them, uh, the effects and things do change on them. But as I say, they're fixed. Um, they look very cool and they give your photos kind of a whole different, a whole different look and feel to them. Uh, I think that looks great. So there, you can see the before and the after. Uh, let's go back to this. Um, yeah, so that's about it. I mean, that's a good overview of what's new in Squash 3. Uh, I hope you really like it. We spent a long time working on it and polishing it and uh, just trying to make it a really great Mac app, fun to use and useful. And hopefully you can fit this into your everyday workflow. And if you want to know more about Squash 3, uh, head over to our website, which is realmacsoftware.com uh, and you can learn more about it there and also purchase a copy of Squash or 
or squash as a bundle with the analog filter pack. All right, thanks for watching this. I will see you soon. Cheers, bye.